welcome to Adrenaline Athletic Training in Corona. I'm Pep Fernandez, and this is another edition of the HS Game Time Live Blitz. And we are so happy to have head coach Alex Pierce from Carter High School and his star linebacker right here, Lokani Toa Iloa. Am I one of the few guys that gets your name right? Yeah, you're yeah. the only one who had it right on the first year. Yeah. You're it. <laughs> so we're going to talk Carter High School football, their move to the Citrus Belt League, a lot of stuff. Um, later in the show, Justin Simon from Temecula Valley, he has officially committed to the University of Arizona. So our five-star basketball player right here in the IE going to the Wildcats. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the show and get you up to date on some of the baseball and softball league championship races. But right now, it's all about the Carter Lions. And let's start with their head coach, Alex Pierce. And coach, last year you guys were uh, in San Andreas. Right. Had a fine season. Now you moved to the Citrus Belt, which is a, a Right. So you've only got three non-league games. Uh, your thoughts just on moving to the CBL and what that might mean for Carter? I, you know, it's an exciting opportunity for us. Um, you know, it's a chance to play against some great competition, uh, go to some great, great facilities, and, and move up to uh, you know some better competition. I think. Yeah, and there's a lot of speculation what's going to happen at these CIF meetings about which teams will be moving to a different division. I mean. Whatever will be the central division, that, does that sound like where the Citrus Belt might end up at at some point? Yeah, from what I understand, there's you know people are moving around with it with the, uh, the Pac-5. Um, not quite sure where the Southwestern baseline is, but we'll we'll come in and you know fit in whatever division they put us in, and do the best we can to compete. You know, it's um, like I said, going to the CBL is one of the most storied you know leagues in Southern California, so yeah. it's an exciting opportunity for us. And uh, last year, seven and four overall, four and right. one in the in the San Andreas. San, Ange San Gorgonio had a great season last year. That was your only league loss. Uh, talk about some of the guys coming back. I went to a couple of your games. Uh, Zamori Ziegler, he's back, right? Right. Yep. Zamori Ziegler's back. Yeah. Kenny Toyolo is back. Kenny Clark's back. We returned nine starters on each side of the ball. What did I say? Oh, I said Kenny. Sorry, Keon. Keon, <laughs> Keon and Clark. They look the back. same, right? I mean, they're close. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're both, both big guys. They both play nose. You know, yeah. they're both you know work really hard and do all the great things. So. Yeah, so we like I said, we got nine return starters on the, on each side of the ball, so that's exciting for us. All right, let's talk to Locaney a little bit now, and uh, a big day for you, right? Uh, an offer from the Oklahoma Sooners, and then Stanford rolls through town uh, to check you out at school. I mean, what was that like? Um, you know, just an another day in the life of uh, Locaney. I mean, I guess you can say that, but you know, no matter how much it happens, you just never get used to this kind of thing. Were you uh, excited about Oklahoma? Was that kind of there? Yeah, it was, it was pretty much out of the blue. I've had no contact with them pretty much. and They just came during lunch and told me they uh, wanted me to play for them. <laughs> Surprisingly, uh, I didn't have that problem in high school. I didn't have all these big-time <laughs> schools coming through. I know you guys are stunned by that. Um, Notre Dame also, right? Notre Dame was an, an also a, another school that recently offered. Um, what you you can correct me if I'm wrong. USC, UCLA, Arizona State. Does that sound about right? All these schools. I mean, there's more too that have already offered. Um, regardless of where you end up going, which school you choose. I mean, what's important to you? What do, what are you looking for? The most important part to me is the education. You know, that's what it comes down to. That's the main thing I'm looking for. Because football is fun and all, but it's not going to be here forever. I mean, that's just reality. No matter how much you want it to be, it's not. And the education, that's what's going to help carry me on throughout uh, life as far as once football is over, that's what's going to help me go on. And we should remind people that um, you're only going to be a junior this fall. So, I mean, you had a great sophomore year for the Lions, but, and you've still got two more years in front of you uh, at Carter High School. Have you thought about what you want to do in college or a major or something besides football that, you know, you have an interest in? You know, something like that. That's something I've been definitely looking into. Coach, you saw him play as a sophomore. He, as a sophomore, he was one of the best players on the field, and he right. still has two more years at the high school level. Yeah, I'm a lucky guy. I know. I mean, I, have. You know it, we knew his special as a freshman. You know, Usually as a freshman, we, we pulled him up for uh, the playoffs, and usually the freshmen are kind of timid and don't want to get in there, and, and he mixed it up right away. You know, So I knew we had someone that was really to go, and he'd be, he'd be a force to be reckoned with for the next three years. So get it was, in, you get him as a junior and a senior. I mean, what right. are you expecting uh, at the end of this two years? Like one of the – Top players from out. One of the top players, i.e., but I mean, he he just does everything the right the right way. You know, he works really hard. He um, you know, in class he he, he turns in all his homework. The teachers love him. I mean, it's just he does all the, everything the right way, not just the stuff that he's doing on the football field. That's what's so nice to to be able to coach him for the next you know three years. Uh, let's go back to this upcoming season. Uh, tell me about your non-league schedule. You know who all the teams in the Citrus Belt, yourself and Citrus Valley, move into the CBL. But who are your non-league games this season? We open up versus Rialto for the you know city championship. And then we've got Colony and Chaparral on the, in the preseason 
So, so not shying away from some. Uh, not some shying big away dog. from. We got some big dogs coming in, and you know that, that's fun. You know, it, it's it's more fun to being exciting games like those and and stuff. So, I mean, I think that'll help us prepare us for the CBL and then whatever division we we end up in, you know, for the playoffs. And you got to look good for those games, Locaney. I heard you're getting some uh, new helmets, some uh, new looks uh, for Carter this season. Oh yeah, we got some uh, all whites. Yeah. yeah. Are you excited about that? Yeah, we got the white pants too. You know, gonna be uh, cocaine whites. Yeah. <laughs> so, did you pick those out, or did Coach pick them out? I mean, how did you guys? Uh, does he take your input when you're picking out uniforms? Yeah. Well, uh, this year we're uh, we're doing stuff new with the program. Like we have a leadership council that consists of a certain amount of kids from each grade level. You know, we come together uh, every other week and talk about how we can improve the team and whatnot. And one day after uh, training, after on a Wednesday, one day he pulled the leadership council together and asked how we uh, felt about getting white helmets instead of the blue. And everyone agreed on white, and so now we have uh, all new white helmets. And uh, you sent me a picture of them. They look really sharp. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're I really like sharp. It. Yeah, they, they look really clean. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Like I say, we're, Bridge Club's getting some white away pants for us and stuff, so we'll be able to go all white on away games and mix it up a little bit. You know, yeah. so yeah, it's exciting. Now we talk new, new league, new look. So you, you got yeah, all fresh look uh, right. for 2014. Yeah. We talked a little bit last year about you know this team being young and maybe taking some growing pains, but getting better. Mm -hmm. I mean, did you like what you saw last season? And these guys all have a season under their belt now as, right. as you move forward. Yeah, I think you know we've seen a lot of a lot of maturity over the past uh, few months and how hard we've been working out. Um, you know, we do stuff after school pretty much since January, you know, one day a week or so for each position group. And um, the kids are really taking ownership of the team and, and making their own. You can tell it's been great size. And we've only been in, we just finished up our third day of spring ball. You can tell we're, we're a lot further along now than we were. So that's nice to see. Now we've got the NFL draft coming up beginning tomorrow. Well, Kenny, for, for you, is that something further down the road that you've been eyeing, like that was always a dream of yours? Or is it maybe just recently you, you thought, you know what? I'm getting some looks at colleges now, some big-time programs. This is something that might actually happen for me in my future. Yeah, most definitely, you know, just the fact of even going to college for football, that's something I never even thought would happen my first year playing football because my first year I didn't even play. I was one of the kids who got the minimum number of plays, so I was on the sideline for the majority of the game. And as time went on, you know, I, I mean, I'm glad I'm making a career out of this football thing. So, Coach, when he came to Carter, did they say, hey, watch out for this guy, or did he kind of just make him his own name for himself on the field, or was there kind of the buzz already around Lokini as he, you know, came to the program? You no, know, there wasn't. You know, he just kind of made his own name for himself. Um, you know, we knew especially the first game, um, you know, now he started making big plays and started having them on his, uh, on his phone, you know, little little clips of him making plays. And, I'd, you know, the college coaches would come around and be like, hey, you need to look at this, this freshman. And, <laughs> and as you know, he's going to start progressing because he works so hard, you know. And, He's made himself into into what he is. You know, he he still goes to you know training twice in tw two days a, a week. You know, he he works out really hard in the sixth period. It's worse. He does you know, like I said, he does all those things to be successful. Uh, do you know uh, Kenny Clark very well, or has he yeah. talked to you about this process? You know, of you know schools looking at you and you know kind of handle mm -hmm. how to handle all that. Yeah, I've uh, developed a relationship with him, a relationship with him from uh, freshman year, and you know with his brother Keon, you know being my nose guard now, you know we definitely have a even strong relationship now. Then. Uh, what we did in my freshman season. You know, we text back and forth here and there just going through the whole and whatnot and what it was like for him and how it was like for me. You stay in touch with Kenny also? I mean, he, he had a great freshman year at UCLA, and he's only going to get better. Yeah, you know, I, I still talk to Kenny. We, uh, you know, we'll, we'll text message back and forth once in a while. I went out to spring ball practice a couple times, got to take him out to dinner once afterwards. But, you know, it's it's busy. The life of a D1 college football player, it's, you know, it, it's go from 6 o'clock in the morning till 9 o'clock at night. You know, it's go, go, go. So he's doing really well. You know, he's – He's um, doing really well on the football field, but he's doing excellent academically too, and so that's that's really important. Do you know what he's studying by chance? I'm just curious. He hasn't uh, decided yet. He's he undecided has, right now. Yeah. I'm sure he's got a future uh, playing on Sundays as well. It looks like. I hope so. You yeah. know, but like I said, he's that's something that they kind of have in similar personality traits. It just wasn't just all football that they cared about. They both really cared about um, their school work and being good people. And you know, Kenny's carrying that on at UCLA. He's, you know, everybody I talked to said that you know they they love how hard he works in the classroom and how what a good person he is and citizenship and all that stuff. And Kenny has has the same type of of attitude. And um, he was a heck of a wrestler, too, in high school. Yes, I mean, he, he was. He yeah. was a stud. I remember covering him uh, on the wrestling mat, which I, I guess would help, right, playing uh, on the line like that? Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, yeah. wrestling and, and football kind of go hand in hand. You know, I think it's important as far as learning leverage. And, you know, it's a physical sport like football is. You know, so I think that definitely helped him out. And that was something also whenever the 
college coach would ask me, ask me, you know, did you play anything else in wrestling? And is he good? I'm like, yeah, he's really good. Yeah. You know, so got yeah, an opportunity to go see, you know, how how it, um had to, how agile and how athletic he was. Now, uh, this guy's a stud on defense. Are you going to give yeah. the ball in his hand on offense? I mean, or is he just going to focus on linebacker? He is never coming off the field. <laughs> Special teams. <laughs> Special Can you teams? punt, Logan? <laughs> Can you punt? No, I mean, I think that's – that's the name of the game is, you know, how many different ways can yeah. you can you utilize, you know, special players, you know. And so he's he's definitely one of the special players and we'll come up with ways to, to utilize them all over the field. You know, I mean, I think if, you know, Zamora Ziggler had six or seven kickoffs or, you know, punt returns for touchdowns and quite a few of them you see Lokangi laying somebody out. Yeah, you know springing what I mean? them so loose, yeah. Springing them loose. So that's just an opportunity we have to score and anything he can do to help the team, he's, he's willing to do. And so, you know, we'll do that. Now you've got some other talented guys on the Carter team. Uh, when Definitely. This, when the schools check out Locaney, I mean it's good exposure for everybody on the team, right? Locaney, I mean you mm -hmm. kind of, you kind of feel like maybe you're helping these other guys out too. I mean get seen. Yeah, not uh, not so much me helping them out, but they help me out as well. You know the position I'm in, I I honestly don't think I would be here without the guys on my team like Zamora, Ziegler, and Keon Clark. You know because they help contribute to my success on the, under the lights and during the games and whatnot. So I feel, I feel it goes both ways. How about this guy over here, Coach Pierce? How has he helped you along the way? Well, he's, get, he's get better and improve. You know? Yeah, he's helped a lot. You know, teach me how to compete at, uh, the best I can, you know, and whatnot. He, Coach Pierce is a great coach. Now, Coach Pierce had a big uh, crawfish boil at his house. <laughs> you weren't invited. I wasn't invited. I'm terribly heartbroken. But uh, big, you lived in Houston for a while, right? That's what I people lived in do, Houston right? for a while. My, my wife's from Texas, went uh -huh. to University of Texas. Um, when the people we met, you know, he, he played, uh, he's from, they're from Houston, from Texas too, and he actually played baseball at LSU and stuff. And so, you know, we're the only people kind of out here that's ever had crawfish. <laughs> so, you know, last year we had the first ever uh, crawfish boil and we kind of had, you know, had some people over and experienced it. And so this year was the second annual. Next year we had the third annual. The first year we ordered uh, 100 pounds of crawfish and had it flown in. And this year is 120. So next year hopefully we'll have, you know, 200 pounds of crawfish running. You can come with your family and stuff and Man, crawfish. Yeah, it's a, that's it's a lot house. of fun. Yeah, it's it's a good time. And when you're not doing that, we're hanging out at gymnastics. Hanging right? out at gymnastics, watching people on balance beams, watching people do trolls at ballet. You know, that's right. All over it. Every Saturday morning, we're Saturday just kicking morning. It. Yeah, yep. <laughs> I'm coaching my daughter on the balance beam. You're you know commentating about it, so it all works out. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> it can never stop. Yeah, we we never stop. We, we stick <laughs> we're to those always roles. going. Uh, you get to play Ukaipa again this upcoming season. Now that yep. you're in the Citrus Belt League, it's a, it's a league game for Carter. Um, you've got some Ukaipa roots. Uh, are you yeah, excited was, about that matchup with uh, Coach Price out there? Yeah, it's funny. You know, Coach Price and I are you know, our friends. We get along. He said, I've, I've lived in Ukaipa now for, for 10 years. My son's a, a sophomore at, at Ukaipa High School. My wife's an administrator in the district. So, you know, there'll be some, some bragging rights going on and stuff. It'll be, you know, competitive and fun. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, obviously no slide against the San Andreas League, but, Locaney, are you excited to be joining the Citrus Belt? You're going to see Redlands East Valley. You're going to see Redlands. You're going to see Ukaipa over here. I mean, there's some pretty good teams that you're going to have to go through to, to win a league title in the CBL. Yeah, definitely. I'm excited about the, the competition level, you know, the whole thing, and especially playing guys, uh, playing schools like Rev. You know, they got Malik LeVette, one of our teammates. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's exciting just knowing that we're going to finally be able to play against each other and whatnot. Now, we're in the newsroom knocking heads trying to find out the last IE guy to go to Notre Dame, or at least a guy who's been heavily recruited by Notre Dame, and they had to go back to, like, the mid-'80s. But right now we've got yourself, Malik Lovett, Blake Barnett, who's already committed from Santiago, mm -hmm. and uh, Akili Ross from Riverside Poly, all offers from Notre Dame. Right. Not saying you're all going to go there, but that's pretty cool. A school as prestigious as Notre Dame looking at the IE and going for guys like Locaney. I mean, your thoughts, Coach, on just a, a big-time program like that and – you know, acknowledging, hey, the IE's got some of the best guys around, and there's, right. four, there's four right there. I just think people, you know, are realizing how much talent's in the IE, you know, that there's there's talent all over the place, and that, you know, we, we also have some kids that are really good academically. They can fit into places like Notre Dame, you know, and so, um, I'm, you know, it's exciting to have historic programs come down and, and visit the IE and, um, you know, to kind of take notice of how, what a good brand of football that we have here. You know, Locaney, when you get letters and, and stuff from the schools, uh, do you keep it? Do you, you put it up on your wall? I mean, what do you do with this stuff? I mean, do you use it as motivation? I mean, how do you, how do you use that stuff? I keep it all. You know, yeah. the, whether I open it or not, I keep it all. I have a, a drawer on my dresser that I, you know, show my kids and whatnot. Just something to look back on because I'm never going to get these days back. Now, you were offered by Oklahoma today. You had Stanford ro roll through school. Like I said, I don't know what it's like. So walk me through that. I mean, did they just call you up and say, hey, we'd love to have you at Oklahoma. There's a scholarship waiting for you. I mean, how, how does that all work out? Well, it was, uh, today with Oklahoma, it was right after third period. You know, I was going to lunch. 
And I just, I haven't even, lunch didn't even technically start yet because about to ring yet. And Coach Pierce was standing there with the coach from Oklahoma. You know, he pulled me aside and we were talking in front of Coach Pierce and he said that um, he wanted to get the full breakdown of me he really knows me on and off the field. And then he told me that they would like for me to play for them. Well, that's exciting. So, Coach, when they ask you about this guy, what kind of stuff do you tell them? Um, first, I tell them, you know, what a good person he is and how he works so hard. Um, you know, what a, what a great teammate he is and a leader he is. Then I, then I tell him about his academics. You know, he's, he gets, you know, all A's and few B's. You know, he's great academically. And then, you know, what a great football player he is. You know, and, you know, size-wise and speed-wise and everything, he's got, he's got all four. You know, he's a great football player. He, he meets all the, the height and med, the academics and then the, the quality of person that he is. And so I think when you have all four of those things, that's when you get somebody to get so many early offers. You know, I think if you're, if you're missing one of those, people go, well, let's wait out and see how his character plays out or let's see how his grades play out. But yeah. when you've got all four, you know, then, then you've got something where you're getting offers from around the country. Now you see in other sports, especially like softball, they, they offer like their freshman year and they, and they accept, they give a verbal and they wait four years later and then they end up changing their minds or whatnot. Right. Um, you're only a sophomore. I mean, is this a decision you want to make and just have it done so you don't have to worry about it or something you just kind of want to let it play out and do your due diligence and maybe, you know, visit the schools and talk to people and, you know, <laughs> talk to people in your circle, like your family and your coaches to see what might be the best fit for you. I definitely plan on uh, playing it out. You know, going on all my visits, you know, finding out as much about each school as I possibly can. I'm definitely going to take into consideration my family's opinions and all, but at the end of the day, it comes down to what I feel is best for me because at the end of the day, I'm going to be the one there for the next four or so years of my life, you know, getting my degree there, doing what I'm doing, you know. So it, I'm going to take into consideration what everybody thinks, but at the end of the day, it comes down to what I really feel is best for me. I'm sure uh, Kitty Clark's at UCLA saying, come on over. We wouldn't <laughs> mind having So he would be, same scenario, he'd be a senior, right? Because he didn't redshirt, so he'd be a right. senior if uh, Lokini went there as a freshman. Right. So you'd have one season together. Assume he didn't go to the NFL early, Assuming, I guess. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so uh, back to next season, Coach, where do you think you'll be strong this year? I mean, is there certain points, certain things, on aspects of your team that you say, you know what, I feel really good about going into uh, next year in these uh, certain areas? Well, we have, like I said, so many returners. I feel pretty strong. Um, you know, all of them. I think our offensive line is going to be much improved with, uh, you know, um, getting so many games under their belt you know they, they it was all brand new we didn't have any returning starters from last well Keon but he was he was playing a different position mm -hmm. you know and so um I feel really strong about that position because I feel like your offensive line is is the hardest to kind of get motivated you know you're getting not so motivated but advanced you know I, everybody goes out and plays catch not too many people go out and play block yeah. you know so yeah. offensive lines a offensive lines it takes a little <laughs> longer to develop you know and so I'll, i'm really looking forward to the progress that they've made and you know we always have speed at carter and so that's nice we get the offensive line rolling stuff and we all score a lot of points and on defense you know it's a another same thing it's having so many re returners is that they've had the opportunity to see the defense and see the varsity field is it's a lot different on thursdays at 3 15 than it is at fridays at seven o'clock yeah. so you know i think that newness will kind of wear off and will be much improved at several areas can I steal that line from you? Nobody goes outside and plays block. Does <laughs> no, he use that on block. you? Or? <laughs> this is new to me. That, <laughs> that's, a great, that's a great. Nobody goes outside, you know, to play block. They play, you know, they pass. They play pass. Yeah. They play catch. You know, no, no one plays block. So, hey, what about your boy Vinny Fazio? Uh, he's now in a high school. Ramona, I know you yep. guys are tied. Uh, your thoughts on Vinny and what he might be able to do for the Rams? Well, you know, Vinny. Vinny brings in a lot of energy. You know, he's a uh, he's a great football coach. He's always able to to bring a good staff. You know. Um, and, you know, I, I just think he's going to bring a lot of excitement, a lot of toughness. And like I said, he, he's a fantastic coach. You know, I, I talk to him a lot about, you know, scheme and things like that and just overall program development. He's, you know, we bounce ideas off each other um, all the time. I, I, I think the Ramones going to be much improved and um, really happy for him. So he was your, your DC, your defensive coordinator yep. at Carter, right? Yes. Um, let's see. So that was right before he went to Eisenhower. My, my right. Year. Your freshman year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So – you know, did you see, like, hey, this guy's a head coach? I mean, he was always, you know, yeah, he's real mean, he was, he was real enthusiastic. He was real enthusiastic. He was more of an assistant head coach than, you know, uh, uh, just a defensive coordinator, you know. I mean, he did a lot as far as, you know, working with the program design and expectations and stuff like that. He he always showed that he wanted to be um, a head football coach, and, you know, he did that by doing, you know, a great job of defense and with his position coach. And at the time, everybody coached two positions, you know, one defense and one offense. And, you know, whenever he coached quarterbacks, he coached them just as hard, you know, and brought into whatever system we were doing, you know. And so I think um, doing all, all those things just really showed what a, what a good head coach he was going to end up being. You know, and that was something he's in his career path. And, 
you know, in, in his blood, you know, with his dad being such yeah. a you know, story again coach, and he's, he's an excellent coach also. You know, I just really enjoyed our, you know, our time at Carter, and I knew it was going to be short-lived when I hired him. It wasn't a thing of I'm going to be at Carter for the next 20 uh-huh. years. You knew he was going to move on and be a head coach and do real th- good to good things. So, Well, he's definitely a friend of our program. We love him. Yeah, you I mean, love he, him on here. He, man, he's great. <laughs> he says whatever he wants to say, and he's very candid, and uh, he always has good opinions about things. Uh, Locaney, let's go back to you for a second. What are some things that you want to improve on the next two years, uh, your junior and senior seasons here at Carter High School? I want to improve on everything. You know, going back and – I, to this day, I still go back and watch film from every game from last year. And just things on there I feel that I could have done differently. Think, a lot of things I feel like I can improve on, which is what I'm working on now this whole offseason. So league title, CIF title, I mean, is that kind of the goals as you set out for each season? Or do you guys just take it, you know, the old cliche game by game and just, you know, win that play, win that down, and, and see what happens? Or right, we'll go with Locaney first. I, this is game by game. You know, last year being a young squad, you know, knowing we had talent, but not really the chemistry there. Last year, I think that's uh, where we had problems that was not taking it game by game, you know, day by day. We're thinking of the bigger picture, you know, steps ahead r- without taking that first initial step. So this year, I feel we all know what, what it's going to take, you know, having that year under our belt. And we're definitely planning on taking it day by day this year. How about you, Coach? Same thing? Yeah, same thing. I mean, I think that, you know, we have the potential to be, you know, excellent and have everybody's kind of dreams and stuff come true. But you got to take it day by day and, you know, see how everything plays out. I, I think that, you know, we have the talent to be very successful this year. It just depends on how um, how we go about our daily businesses, getting better at this practice. And then, you know, Friday when we practice, we got to be better than we were today. You know, so, I mean, that's just kind of the motive we had this whole year is just improve every day and, you know, set practice goals and get better than that and, and not, not be satisfied with anything and not take anything for granted. You guys are in spring ball right now, right? Right now, yep. I mean, how much of what you guys are doing right now will be – you know, showing up maybe in November, you guys are, you know, tr- trying to challenge for a league title or whatnot. I mean, do, the work you're putting in now, does, does it show up in uh, in the fall? Yeah, absolutely. I know. I think now is whenever we're putting in, you know, all of our schemes and our drills and, yeah. and everything else. And so that by the time we're done with spring ball, whenever we're working during the summer, you're not teaching anything. It's all, you know, um, reactionaries, which, you know, trying to get to where they're not thinking about it. They're just doing it, you know. Top Gun, if you think you're dead, you yeah. know, it's the same type of deal, you know. Same thing for your locating. I mean, right now is it all about, hey, let's get everybody on the same page, get some cardio, you know, and uh, some fitness in, and then fall rolls around. You guys are ready to hit the ground running, right? Yeah, I mean, this year it's definitely different. You know, in my honest opinion, our first day of spring ball, which was Monday, I think that day by itself was better than all the spring balls combined last season. You know, with, like I said, having that uh, year of experience in our belt, you know, now everybody's on the same page. We all know what's expected of the program. We all know how to do things, and we execute it to the best of our ability. Who are some other guys, Okaney, on your team? Uh, we talked about Keon Zamora. Who are some other guys on your team that you're expecting to, you know, have some big seasons? I'm expecting my brother to have a big season. You know, he's not playing quarterback this year. He's actually out there being an athlete like he can. You know, he's going to be out there making plays on offense and defense. You know, he's he's going to be in spots where he can shine this year. Uh-huh. Everybody, you know, we got Dejan, Dejan McFoy coming back. All our O-lines come. Everybody's coming back pretty much. We have everybody coming back. So everybody's going to be out there making plays. Wow, so you got all this experience coming back. You know, right. you've you've got uh, three pretty tough non-league games, so you'll be battle tested for the CBL. I mean, why not? Why not challenge Rev and Ukaipa and, and Redlands and you know, Eisenhower right. and, and those schools, right? I mean, is that kind of the mindset? Why not us? You know? Yeah, why not us? You go out yeah. there and compete. You know, like Kangi keeps on saying, compete to the best of our ability. And you know, I think if we do that, you know, we're, we can be in every game. You know, there's not a there's not a game I look at where I sit there and go, well. If we play our best, we can't win. You know, I think we're capable of, of playing with, with everybody that's on our league or in our, you know, non-league schedule. And, yeah, non-league and league, yeah. Well, Kenny, I don't know if you can see, but that's Le- Leonard Russell right around the corner. He, maybe you can see him in the reflection over here. He's the head head football coach uh, here at Adrenaline. He uh, played for the Patriots. He had some great years for the Patriots. Mm-hmm. played for the Chargers. That guy's massive. I mean, you're a linebacker. <laughs> you have to tackle the running back. Can you imagine that guy's a running back coming at you? Coming not, downhill at you? Not right now. Not as of now, but, you know, later on down the road, I'll be able to take dudes like that. <laughs> That's, I like that confidence yeah, right yeah. there. Yeah, but uh, Leonard, Leonard Russell, uh, certainly a low. That guy's a big guy, and uh, he had some NFL draft experience. We're going to talk about that a little bit later in the show. But we are, once again, we are live at Adrenaline Athletic Training in Corona. They're always a great host here for HS Game Time, the Blitz. Uh, we really appreciate that. And uh, we'll wrap things up with Carter here uh, as we look forward. We talked about where you guys might be strong. We talked about your schedule talked about the new uniforms as well uniforms, right yep. i mean so uh, just the big picture i mean what do you, what are you expecting from uh, from the squad this year i mean just working hard and joining a new league and all that yeah i expect a lot of excitement i expect yeah. the kids to um 
you know, really play together as a, as a team this year. You know, like I said, last year with having so uh, so many few seniors and stuff, yeah. it was kind of different. But now, you know, everybody gelling and working so hard since January, you know, um, doing things after school and stuff. I think the, we're, we're definitely getting on the same page with everyone as far as what the expectations are. And, um, you know, the kids are taking leadership of the team and stuff. And that's what we're really looking forward to. And that's, that's why I kind of did the leadership council and stuff. And I said, you know, if you guys are only disciplined when I'm around, that's that's not true discipline. You got to yeah. have self disciplined and um, I think that's starting to show. So you know, we still got a long ways to go, um, but I think if we keep on progressing. Like we're gonna have a successful season. Same thing, Locania. I mean, you, got, you mentioned all these guys coming back. You know, you must feel pretty good about that. And uh, you know, who knows? I mean, this could be the year Carter steps into the CBL and, and you know makes some noise against some of those uh, those teams who traditionally do very well in the CBL. But you know, why not Carter? We're, we're definitely going to make some noise. We plan on making a lot of noise, you know. Our football team, our bond this year is so much stronger than it was last year. You know, every day together at lunch, we're together at lunch. We're together all the time. After each class, we're together all the time. You know, the bond is stronger, you know. We're always at another teammate's house over the weekend just talking about the, the future, you know, this upcoming season and everything else. Like, we're definitely going to make some noise this year. So you're telling me on a Saturday night you're home breaking down the playbook? Really? <laughs> well, yeah, uh, me and uh, Keon, yeah. every day, well, not – Every day, every other day, yeah. we always uh, we tend to watch film yeah. from last season, you know. And I'll be watching film, and he's doing something, and I'll send him a text like, wow, like, I can't believe we did this. And, or same thing, he'll, <laughs> vice versa, he'll text me like, why I can't believe I did this? Like, why did we do that? You know, just going back and forth, you know, we get better every day in, in any way we can. Shock up last season, new experience, right? And just yeah. and just improve on that. And and I'll, I'll just say it's um, just randomly you put on a Notre Dame visor, right? Well, yeah, I just, just got this, uh, yesterday <laughs> from uh, Damian Alloway. We went to... The one who, you know, oh, Summit right High School. Summit, right? Yeah, gr fellow Ground Zero baller. You know, he just got offered by Cal and UCLA the other day. Yeah, I picked him up and gave him a ride to go to Ground Zero training last night at AOS. And he had this hat. He told me he had the visor as soon as they offered me. He, uh -huh. he told me he had the visor, so I traded him a pair of socks for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I'm not going to read too much into it, you know. It. Just because you have a Notre Dame visor, I'm not going to be, hey, guess or what, everybody? So, uh, but anyways. Coach Carter, uh, Coach Pierce <laughs> from Carter High School, we really appreciate Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Locaney, you're the man. Appreciate it very much, guys, and uh, good luck. Best best of luck this season. Uh, we'll see if you guys can bring home that CBL crown. Sounds great. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. I'm going to wave uh, Leonard Russell on over. Hey, Leonard. Leonard. Can I give a, Come shout, on up. Can I give a shout out to my Ground Zero team? Of course. I want to give a shout out to my Ground Zero guys and everybody, Coach Brown, Coach Hawkins. Everybody know they, as far as Coach Pierce, he's drilled into us competing to the best of our ability. And, you know, playing with Ground Zero, is, is, it takes it to a whole nother level, you know, competing with the best of the best. You know, we got Malik, seven on seven, right? Yeah, we yeah. got Malik Psalms, a Cal commit. Damian Alloway just got offered by Cal UCLA the other day. Malik LeVay holds offers from Texas A&M. Everybody, you know, just it's just constant competition. You know, that they're, they're, with Coach Pierce and Ground Zero, you know, that's, that's the best combination there is. To, and that's a big part of why I'm in the position that I'm in now. So, Revs, Malik LeVette's on that seven on seven with you? Yeah, team? yeah. Do you talk about this fall when you're going to light them up uh, in CBL play or what? Oh, yeah, definitely from, from, the, from the start. You know, just, just know when we first met each other, you know, it was kind of the, the instant uh, relationship, the instant yeah. bond you have with the guy. And we talked back and forth just knowing that he goes to the Rev and we go to Carter and that we play each other this year. It was an instant, uh, instant you know, Chemistry, drawing up the yeah, mouth. Yeah. yeah. And even to this day, we still talk back and forth. You know, he tells me he's not going to meet me in a hole. You know, he's he's going to try and give me a space where that's his uh, – you know, that's where he has a higher chance of getting me uh, out. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's all friendly talk, you know, friendly competition. <laughs> so from teammates to opposition uh, yeah. this fall for uh, Lokeni Toa Wiloa yeah. and uh, Malik Levent. could be two Notre Dame guys. Who knows at this point? So uh, we'll see how it plays out in the next couple of years. But, guys, thank you so much. I really right. appreciate Thanks. it. You guys, appreciate you guys it. were awesome. Down. And uh, the, the next crawfish boil, Lokeni and I, are we you there? You guys are I mean, in. Yeah, you're in. Okay, I just want to make sure. We'll fly in some extra crawfish for you. All right, deal. All right. All right, thanks, See guys. Coach. See you Saturday. I appreciate some, uh, some ballet oh. and some gymnastics. Uh, Nine fifteen on the dot. I'll, I'll be there. All right. Thank yeah, you, guys. Thanks. I appreciate it. All right, so that was uh, Carter head coach Alex Pierce and his star linebacker Lakeni Toa Iloa from Carter. Uh, they're expecting a big year, a lot of experience under their belt, and uh, we're expecting big things from the Lions this upcoming season as they uh, now go to the CBL. They're gonna have seven games in league play and those three non-league games, which will be. Very, very tough uh, for the Lions coming up, but they've got the experience, so uh, who knows what uh, what will happen this year for Coach Alex Pierce uh, this coming season. We're going to track down uh, Leonard Russell, the head football coach here at Adrenaline, get his take on the NFL draft. You know, he went through this experience. We'll kind of pick his brain a little bit. But first, I, uh, I joined Jim Alexander, a columnist for the Press Enterprise, and we kind of did a little quick rundown of all the uh, 
former high school football stars from the IE who went on to college to do big things, and now they're hoping to hear their names called uh, during the NFL draft, which is Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, or possibly sign as a free agent. So here's Jim and I uh, breaking down the NFL draft for our IE players. Well, the NFL draft is quickly approaching this week, and a lot of guys, Jim, that we used to talk about on Friday night, starring on the high school gridiron, now ready to take their next step in their career, professional career now, as they hope to get to uh, an NFL franchise, get drafted or sign as a free agent. What are some of the names come Thursday, Friday, Saturday that we're going to look for, i.e. guys? Well, we've got a lot of, actually, we've got a lot of guys that are going to make that Friday to Saturday to Sunday transition from here. Um, Last year, we had a bunch that were that signed as undrafted free agents. We could have that this year. We've got about seven or eight guys who are prospects. Uh, a couple that come to mind right away are the two kids from uh, Arizona State, uh, linebacker Carl Bradford and uh, linebacker defensive end Will Sutton, who come from Norco and Centennial, respectively. Mm -hmm. uh, Carl Bradford's kind of jumped ahead of uh, Will Sutton in some of the... Uh, uh, mock, mock drafts. drafts. Like third or fourth round uh, somewhere? Uh, second, second or third. Uh -huh. We're, we're not going to have anybody pick Thursday night for the first round, but we could. those guys could go in the second or third round Friday. Uh -huh. And then most of our other guys probably will be late round picks on Saturday. Um, among those, uh, Ronald Powell, Florida linebacker from Rancho Verde. Uh -huh. uh, Quincy Anunwa, I Hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, another Rancho Verde guy who's a wide receiver at Nebraska. Uh, Daniel Sorensen is an interesting guy. Uh, played at Colton. He is a strong safety at BYU. And no less an authority than Mel Kuyper says that this guy's underrated and he could make somebody a good a good. Uh, Safety is a late round draft pick. Now, is that the younger brother of the Chargers quarterback? It is. It is. Younger brother of, of Brad Sorensen. Oh, that's excellent. So, in your opinion, let's say you're going to be drafted in the seventh round. Is it better to maybe not get drafted and have a choice of where you're going to go, say, Vontez Perfect? I'd say that, that's, probably, that's probably about right. I mean, seventh, you know, it's not like the NBA where if you're drafted, there's a guaranteed contract waiting for mm -hmm. you. Uh, there are no guarantees in the NFL, of course, and if you don't get drafted in the first in those seven rounds, maybe you're better off being undrafted and your agent can kind of shop around for you and you can get in a situation that matches your skill set. All right, so whether it's the draft or free agency, hopefully a good handful of these IE guys will be catching on with an NFL team come by the end of this weekend, right? We'll see what happens. All right, and the column is? The column will be in Thursday morning's paper. It'll be uh, on A1, I believe, so look for it. All right, excellent. Jim Alexander, sports columnist right here at the Press Enterprise. All right, we are back live at Adrenaline Athletic Training in Corona with the head football coach and former NFL superstar Leonard Russell, my guy right here. We've got the draft coming up for the NFL beginning Thursday night. This is a process that you went through. I mean, Leonard, what do you remember about the draft? Well, it was, it was a wonderful process, first of all. Um, I just can remember being a little bit nervous. You know, you hear so many things as just far a little as bit. <laughs> what round you're going to go uh -huh. in, and everybody has a difference of opinion on where they think you're going to go. And so I just can re just remember thinking, man, I just hope I just get drafted. I don't care where I go, who picks me. I just hope they call my name. Did you read a lot of this stuff? I mean, did you say, oh, well, this, you know, this magazine or this newspaper is saying I'm going to go here, or did you try to block it out? Oh, no, I don't. I didn't. I, I tried to follow it all because yeah. that, that's, that was my motivation. So every time I heard somebody say, oh, well, you know, he's a sixth-round pick or a seventh-round pick because of this, because of his speed or because he hadn't played enough at the college level, then I just made me, motivated me to want to work that much harder to prove him wrong and, and, and to hear him call my name um, with a higher pick. Maybe it's hard to put into words, but to hear your name, I mean, you know, if you're watching the draft and they say Leonard Russell, I mean, what, what was that like? I mean, is it, is it difficult to kind of put it into words? Well, you know, it, it, it is kind of. It's It was a dream come true because it, it's accumulation of all the hard work and all the things that I dreamed about starting to play football at eight years old and then playing all the way up through high school and, and, then, and then junior college and then college. So, you know, that process and that preparation, it was just the ultimate 
the ultimate goal. And to hear them call your name on draft day, it's, it was just uh, it was a blessing. So you had a great NFL career. Now you're helping guys, local guys, achieve their dreams of making it. You talked about one guy from Notre Dame, uh, Joe Don Duncan, right? A tight end out of uh, Dixie State. Correct. Joe Don Duncan is a, a wonderful athlete. Uh, the thing that if, if, whether or not he gets called or not, and I'm hoping he does, but his work ethic and his heart is things that sometimes NFL scouts can't gauge. But he's a guy, because uh, he's willing to do whatever it takes to get better and to improve his game, he's a coach's dream. You must be proud. Uh, Arizona State has a couple guys from the IE who are hoping to hear their name called also during the NFL draft, Will Sutton and uh, Carl Bradford. Arizona State, a, a pipeline to the NFL, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> man. we got some guys coming out of A-State, you know what I'm saying? And they, see, and they know where to come. They know to come to the Inland Empire and That's find right. some of these diamonds in the rough. We got them down here, so if some of these other colleges better, you know, take a, take a good look at what Arizona State is doing. But this is going to be a good moment for those guys. Again, like I said, when you work as hard as these guys have, all these guys that's getting ready to get drafted. And to be able to hear their name get called and to be able to go out and live out their, their childhood dreams by playing in the NFL, um, I can just imagine these guys are, are nervous, they're excited, they're on pins and needles, but I know they can't wait till the whole process is over and then they can just play football. All right, I, I've wanted to ask you this for a while. Your first NFL paycheck, do you... Did you use it for like a, a nice little vacation, a, a new car? I mean, I mean, did you do anything? Look, or you look, just no, no, away? no. Listen, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, my the, the 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 most expensive thing my paycheck first went to is when you're in camp, right? You're uh -huh. in, you're in training camp, and 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 once the the veterans know that you're gonna make the team, what they do is they they invite the the first round draft picks out for dinner. Uh -huh. But they invite you out, and you think that they're inviting you out because they're like, hey, congratulations, <laughs> you just made the team. You know, welcome to the you're league. You're one of us. Yeah, yeah, you're one of us. And so you're there, and the, and the coaches come out, and, and all the veteran guys come out, and they spend, like, all this money on food and the most expensive drinks. And then at the end of the night, they give you the bill. So I remember my right. bill My bill was, like, $7,000. It was oh a seven thousand. They're goodness. buying everybody in the restaurant drinks. So that was, like, the most expensive thing that I spent my first paycheck on was, 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 was my teammates. <laughs> But who, it was cool. Who was the, who, this was uh, New England, It right? was New England, so I had Andre Tippett, uh -huh. Irvin Fryer, Bruce Armstrong, those guys, man, and it was, uh, it was, but it was, it was the best money I've ever spent. So they were like, come on, young buck, we're going out to we're dinner. We're going this out to dinner. Fun. Yeah, but I, but I was lucky because that year when I got drafted, the New England Patriots had two number one draft choice, so I got oh. drafted and then they had another local product, um, Pat Harlow. Uh -huh. And so Pat Harlow was another first rounder, so we got to split the bill. So oh. that was kind of cool. That's not so bad. It wasn't too bad. Bill. But still, when you get a $7,000 dinner Woo! bill, you're like, man, you know. Man. But it's like, welcome to the league. You've arrived now. You know, pay for all this. I guess so, yeah. man. The, the life of a rookie in the NFL. Absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. And hopefully some of these IE guys will be hearing their names just like Leonard did um, and, and uh, make it to the NFL and realize that dream. So, like you said, when you were a little boy, the NFL, I mean, that, that was the pinnacle, right? That was that was the best. That that, that was the goal yeah. for me um, because I knew at that age, really at a young age, that that's what I wanted to do, you know, is playing the NFL. I grew up watching it. Actually, I was a Pittsburgh Steelers fan growing up and uh, and and really didn't really know much about New England. So uh -huh. when New England called my name, I was happy. But at the same time, I was like, wow, okay, I'm a Southern California kid, went to Arizona <laughs> State, and now I get drafted by the New England Patriots. So it's the furthest away I could possibly go to go play football. But, you know, I was happy. Hey, you put, had some great years there. You put up some good numbers. And uh, the fans, right? I mean, the fans in New England are great. I love the fans in New yeah. England. Um, I enjoy my teammates. Um, you know, they really welcomed me in when I came in. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing for some of these guys is to get used to knowing their place as a rookie when you first come in because, hey, the veterans is going to try you. They're going to push you. They're going to do things to you to see if you're mentally tough enough to be a part of what they worked so hard for. So once you get through that aspect of it, you know, and get used to the guys pushing you around, making you stand up and sing your, your college school theme song. Like your fight song? Your fight song. You? Oh, they do that. Making you get up from the from the taping table, you know, because uh -huh. they want to get taped. So mentally, once you get past all that stuff and carrying the equipment around and doing all the stuff that they want you to do, it's just football. They made you the ball boy? Don't tell oh, me they yeah, made, yeah. You the, made ball you the ball boy. I used to have to take pass to the locker room. <laughs> you know, I remember it was time I didn't even get to get taped because I would sit down on the table and Andre Tipp would come in, get up, Rook. And then I'd get back on the table and then and then Urban Fryer would come in, get up, Rook. And then I'd get up and i go, you know what, I'm just 
I'm just going to practice so I wouldn't get taped. So, <laughs> but you just got to learn to get there really early before yeah. those guys come in and get your ankles taped because they'll make you get up. But it's everybody got to pay their dues. And, and that's the thing about it is that you understand that they had to go through it, so yeah. you have to go through it. But, um, you know, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. So if you're a young player out there and you had dreams of making it to the NFL just like Leonard did, Adrenaline's the place for you. He knows what it takes. He'll coach you up, and he'll uh, he'll help you achieve that with a lot of hard work. So, Leonard, appreciate you stopping yes, by, sir. man. We're excited no problem, to see the brother. NFL draft starting tomorrow night. Again, man, look, I'm a big fan of this show, Pep. I know you guys do a wonderful job, so I'm telling you, anybody out there lis listening that want to do something, put some money into this thing. <laughs> we Let's go. take it nationwide. We need to get them cats out there in L.A. to come down and see the show because they do a wonderful job, and I always feel glad to be a part of it. Oh, we appreciate that. All Thank right, you very brother. much, Leonard. Yep. And if you see Joe Don, send him my way. All right, he I will. He's supposed to come in here tonight, so we'll see. Coach him up if he's here and send oh, yeah. him my way. I will. All we'll right. Do. Leonard Russell, right. NFL star and uh, the head football coach here at Adrenaline, so you can uh, check him out here in his training. So we appreciate it, Leonard. I'll let you get back to work. I know you're a very busy guy around here. All right, so that was Leonard Russell breaking down uh, his experience from the NFL draft not too long ago. He went to New England, played on some good Patriot teams there. And uh, we'll go back to high school football for just a moment. We were talking to Carter High School, and they're making that move to the Citrus Belt League. And one of those schools they will be seeing this uh, year. Actually, they saw him last year and beat him. It was the Redlands Terriers. But we caught up with Terriers head coach Jim Walker. He's back for his 88th season. I'm just kidding, Coach. Uh, he's been there a long time. Not 88 years, but he's been there a long time. Uh, he's got a young squad, similar to what Carter did last year. He's got a young squad, but has some talent. And we caught up with Coach Walker to get his thoughts on the upcoming season for the Redlands Terriers, the long blue line. What's going on with the mustache for next season? Well, you know, everybody's asking me about the mustache. And, and uh, uh, right now, that's a, that's a state secret. <laughs> you know, we've got to kind of, we, we only bring it out for special occasions. All right, so we'll wait on the mustache, but new unis, right? You're going to mix it up this year a little bit? Well, you know what? We Rumor has it that, yeah, we have some new unis coming in. I, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. We'll see that first home game, if uh, what comes out of the locker room. But uh, we're pretty excited about it, yeah. All right, so the CBL grows this year. You add uh, a couple new teams, so you've only got three non-league games. Um, talk about those three non-league games you have coming up. Well, I'll tell you, you know, uh, we, we scrimmage against Serrano, uh, Ray Maholchek up, uh, and, and they always give us a great game, real physical. But we open the season with uh, Santiago, with uh, Jeff uh, Steinberg. Uh, I call him Jeff Steinbrenner all the time, uh, so I, I kind of caught myself there. But uh, Jeff and his crew, and he does a great job. And, of course, they have that quarterback coming back, uh, Notre Dame guy. And, and uh, you know, he's got an incredible arm, but, man, can he run. He can really run. And, and so uh, he's a dual-threat guy, and you, you really got to be on your toes. And then we play uh, Palm Springs and Palm Desert. And then we open league over to Yuvar versus our crosstown nemesis, Rev Wildcats. So it should be an exciting first four games for us. See, open league against Rev, is that kind of weird? You usually see them a little bit later in the year, right? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. But, uh, you know, every every kind of round-robin scenario, we uh, end up getting them in the first first game. and So it'll, it'll uh, get everybody on their toes, kind of open up the season for us, and uh, we'll see what we got and see what they got. And you were saying you guys will be young in a lot of spots, right? Big, but young. Yeah, you know, uh, we're really excited about our youth, you know, but with youth comes uh, growing pain sometimes. Uh, but some of the guys we have, uh, are exciting players, and, and, and we will have a bunch of juniors and sophomores playing for us. So we'll see. You know, it's the great experiment called the Terriers this year. And finally, Coach, no one really knows what's going to happen at these uh, CIF meetings, but it sounds like uh, the entire CBL could be on the move. Um, any thoughts or, or anything you've heard? Well, you know, I think I think there is going to be some, some re-leaguing in regards to the, the CIF brackets, and rightfully so, you know. Uh, we uh, our Romans down. We're playing up there with the big boys, and and we'd like to have some uh, some equality, I think, in the playoffs in regards to uh, uh, enrollment um, and play against guys our own size. Um, and Centennial and Vista, and Norco, and and all those guys, Rancho and Upland, they do such a tremendous job, and they've got incredible talent. All right, so that was Redlands head coach Jim Walker talking about uh, the Terriers possibly having a new look when they run out of the tunnel for the first time in 2014. And in case you're wondering, their first game in 2014 is on the road at Santiago against Jeff Steinberg and the Sharks. So that would be a classic battle right there, Redlands and Santiago. Uh, moving on, we're talking about Kaiser now and the Cats. 
uh, in recent years have had some great seasons. They won it all two years ago. Last year they reached the semifinals before bowing out to the Rancho Verde High School. I had a chance to catch up with their head coach, Phil Zelaya, and kind of size up next season for the Kaiser Cats. Uh, next year, you know, we have some guys coming back that did play for us last year. Um, you know, in some key positions, running back, we have a couple guys coming back and in the offensive line. You know, we just started spring football. Um, so we're progressively moving forward uh, week to week. You know, we're doing it for three weeks and trying to get the most out of it right now, figure out what our identity is going to be. Uh, obviously, we're going to run the ball, but what our identity is going to be um, as far as the new guys that are coming in and, and then on defense, some of the people that we have to replace on defense. So right now, it's a learning process. It's a long season, and we're just getting started in it to get to our first game in September. So there you have it. And the bar's set high at Kaiser now. I mean, you guys have had uh, some great seasons, a title to show for it. I mean, Expectations are always big, right? Uh, well, you got to believe that things are going to be big. Uh, if you don't think that you can be successful, I can't really tell you where you're going to go. So, um, you know, we believe that we have an opportunity to teach kids to play football the way that we want them to play football. And, um, and hopefully we get some success along the way and have some student athletes that can get scholarships if that's what it's for. Uh, but more importantly, get kids to graduate. Coach Zelai is a great guy, one of the best guys in the business, and I had a chance to catch up with him when uh, former Kaiser player Chris Carter, now linebacker for the Pittsburgh Steelers, was at Redwood Elementary School in Fontana. He was there speaking at career day and donating some interactive books and maps to the students at Redwood, so that was very cool to see. Chris has his own foundation going where he's starting an after-school tutoring program at Kaiser High School. So a guy who makes it big, makes it to the NFL, and now giving back, so that is, that is great to see. Once again, we are live at Adrenaline Athletic Training. I'm Pep Fernandez, and thanks for watching here at HS Game Time. Uh, we're moving on to basketball now, and some very big news for Temecula Valley's basketball star, Justin Simon. Only a junior, but he has now committed to the University of Arizona Wildcats. Uh, we gave him a verbal commitment earlier this week. So Simon taking his talents to Tucson. And he's a five-star guy. Well, what does five-star mean if you're not a basketball uh, junkie? Well. Take it like a hotel. If it's a five-star hotel, you know it's very good. So Justin Simon is a five-star basketball player, um, and he's going to Arizona, six foot five, point guard. Actually, he can play anything on the floor, but uh, he will likely play at the guard position for the Wildcats. Um, he also has offers from UCLA, Kansas, Louisville, Indiana. So when you talk about these traditional big-time college basketball programs, Justin Simon pretty much has an offer from all of them. So, but he's going with Arizona, and he was fabulous for the Golden Bears this past season. Nearly 18 points per game, nine rebounds, four assists, two and a half steals. He did it all for the Golden Bears as Temecula Valley had a great season. And uh, obviously, Justin Simon was a huge reason why. So congratulations to Justin Simon. And if you're watching uh, anyone from the University of Arizona, you're getting a great one. We still get it. We still get it for one more year, his senior season with the Golden Bears. But uh, after that, he's going to be an he's going to be an awesome addition for the uh, University of Arizona Wildcats. So congratulations to Justin Simon. All right, now moving on to baseball. Get you caught up on a couple league races. Hopefully, you saw the highlights. They're already on HS Game Time of La Sierra winning the River Valley League title with a seven to four victory at Ramona on Tuesday. Congrats to the Eagles, their first league title since 2001. Uh, today, there was a number of teams that could clinch outright titles. We had Norco going for the Big 8 title, uh, Kaiser in the Sunkist, and uh, Paloma Valley could do it in the Sun Belt with a two-game sweep against Temescal Canyon, two games this week. And Carter could do the same with a two-game sweep of San Borgonio in the San Andreas. And I know for fact already that uh, Carter did defeat San G today, so one down for the Lions. That gave them, uh, according to my math, a share of the title. One more win would give them the outright San Andreas title. Uh, looking ahead in the Inland Valley League, it looks like probably it's going to boil down to North against Riverside Poly next Tuesday. That will be the big one in the Inland Valley if everything follows course. And in the Citrus Belt League, and the Southwestern League. It's kind of a mess at this point. Oh, man, in the Citrus Belt, Rev and Yukaipa both 9-2, and two, Cajon 8-3. and three. Yukaipa and Cajon are playing on Saturday at uh, San Manuel Stadium, the home of your Inland Empire 66ers. So that's a huge game between Yukaipa and Cajon in terms of the CBL crown. In the Southwestern League, it has been a real battle for Middle Earth. We've got Temecula Valley and Great Oak at both 8-4 and four in league play. And then on the heels 
of the Golden Bears and the Wolfpack, Vista Marietta and Marietta Valley both at 7 and 5. Um, Temecula Valley and Great Oak will play on Thursday. Great Oak beat the Golden Bears 10 to 2 on Tuesday. So a lot still to be decided in the Citrus Bell and especially the Southwestern League for baseball. And uh, over in the softball uh, league title races in the Southwestern League, Marietta Valley now has a two-game cushion on Chaparral. They're at 7-0, the Nighthawks. Uh, Chaparral two games back at 5-2. and two. In the Big 8, King was undefeated, but they stubbed their toe on Corona. So Corona, uh, the Wolves lost to Corona one zip. So the King Wolves are now 5-1 and one in Big 8 league action. Norco and Santiago just a game back at 4-2. and two. And then there's Roosevelt at 3-3. Three and three. And the Wolves have a... A tough stretch to finish with. Here's, here's how they finish the season with Centennial today. That game was probably likely over at this point. Then they have Santiago, Norco, and Roosevelt to finish the year. So all three of those games as well, big time games, and will go a long way in deciding who will take home the Big 8 League crown. And if you win the Big 8 League title, it's a huge accomplishment in softball because the Big 8 League traditionally sends teams to the CIF Division I finals and uh, over in the citrus belt league it's kind of muddled at this point i'm going to call up some uh redlands versus rev highlights from just the other day and uh what we have here now is ukaipa has the lead at 10 and 1 and it looks like they will go on to win the citrus belt league title assuming they don't hit some uh, sort of a road bump here in the final few games cajon is two games back at eight and three and then there's redlands at 8-4, and, and Rev looming at 6-6, six and six, the Wildcats defeating the Terriers 7-6 on Monday. So the Terriers, you can see from the highlights, were hitting the ball pretty hard. They had a 6-0 lead against the Wildcats, and Redlands East Valley came back to win 7-6 on Monday. The same two schools playing right now. In fact, that one could be over as well. They're probably just wrapping up as the Blitz is also wrapping up here. So the Citrus Belt League looks like it will go to Ukaipa, but Redlands East Valley certainly make things interesting. In fact, Ukaipa's only league loss this year came against the Wildcats just a couple weeks ago. So there's an up-to-date look at some of the baseball and softball races, and uh, we will sure, surely keep you up-to-date here on HS Game Time how this will all pan out. And, of course, a lot of schools, yeah, they might not be winning league titles, but they're still jockeying for playoff positioning. They want to finish in the top three maybe even four in some cases in their leagues to punch their ticket to the playoffs. Once again, we got to thank the Carter Lions football team, head coach Alex Pierce, my buddy who hangs out with, uh, hangs out with me on Saturday mornings at gymnastics and ballet class. He's my, uh, he's my buddy on Saturday mornings and his star linebacker, Lo Caney, Toa Iloa. He gave us a little bit of insight in the whole recruiting process. He told us that Stanford was at school today. He was offered by Oklahoma. So big things happening and he's only a sophomore. He has still two more years at Carter High School. And also a big thank you to uh, Leonard Russell, former NFL star and the current head coach here at Adrenaline Athletic Training, giving us his experience of going through the NFL draft in his first year playing for the New England Patriots. I'm Pep Fernandez, and we really appreciate you watching HS Game Time. And we got to give a big thanks to Adrenaline Athletic Training for hosting us each and every Wednesday. We really appreciate their support. Once again, I'm Pep Fernandez for HS Game Time Live, The Blitz, and we will see you again next Wednesday live at 530.